Assalamu alaikum. Hello kids. How are you today? Are you ready for the next story? Insha'Allah, today I am going to tell you the story of the enlightenment of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Are you ready children? Now listen carefully. Bismillah. The enlightenment of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. For the last several weeks, the Prophet was having strange dreams, visions, and voices while he was asleep. He couldn't sleep well, and these incidents troubled his mind. When he told this to his wife, she reassured her husband by saying, Those dreams would bring you no harm. One night, as usual, Prophet Muhammad wasallam was spending the night at Mount Hira, pondering over the purpose of his life. That night, while he was alone and praying, the Prophet suddenly saw a bright light in the form of a man. That angel slowly approached him and commanded, Read! The Prophet was never schooled, so he did not know how to read. He replied honestly by saying, I can't read. The angel spread his arms around the Prophet and held him tightly. He then commanded the Prophet to read. But how could the Prophet read when he was not taught the letters? So he gave the angel the same answer. The angel then squeezed the Prophet so tight he was unable to breathe. Then he commanded, Read! The Prophet was in pain now, and he was suffering. He struggled and asked the being, What should I read? The angel then squeezed the Prophet so hard that he thought he would faint. And he said, Read in the name of your Lord and Cherisher, who created man out of a clot of congealed blood. Read, and your Lord is the most generous, who has taught writing by the pen, taught man which he knew not. The Prophet then repeated the words with a trembling heart. Before leaving, the angel said, I am the angel Gabriel, and you are Muhammad, the messenger of God. The Prophet was stunned by this experience and somehow managed to reach home. As soon as he entered his house, he said to his wife, Wrap me up, wrap me up. He was trembling as he said this, and she wrapped him up in a towel until his fear was gone. He explained to his wife what had happened. When he finished, he asked her if she thought he had gone mad. Allah forbid, she replied. He will surely not let such a thing happen, for you speak the truth. You are faithful and trust. You assist your fellow men. Then she went to her cousin, Waraqa ibn Nawfal, who was old and blind, but he knew the scriptures quite well. He had translated them into Arabic. When she told him about what had happened to her husband, he cried out, Holy! Holy! This is the Holy Spirit that came to Moses. He will be the prophet for his people. Tell him and ask him to be brave at heart. The Prophet continued to receive revelations for the remainder of his life. It was memorized and written down by his companions on sheepskins. The Prophet knew that the people had to hear the message from God. So he started preaching to the people what God told him. For the first few years of his mission, the Prophet preached to his family and close friends. The first woman to convert was his wife Khadija radiallahu anha. The first child to convert was his first cousin Ali. And the first bondsman was his servant Zaid. His old friend Abu Bakr was the first adult free male to convert. Many years later, the Prophet said this about him. I have never called anyone to Islam who was not at first hesitant, except Abu Bakr. Later, the Prophet received the command 
to preach openly. Day after day, Prophet Muhammad worked hard in spreading the message of God to as many people as possible. The Prophet explained the foolishness behind idol worship and taught them the importance of the Holy Qur'an. There were different clans in Mecca at the time, and one of the strongest were the Qurayshis. The people belonging to that clan never saw the Prophet as a serious threat. They ignored him, thinking he was just a single man. But as time passed by, they saw the Prophet was getting more and more followers, and they now thought of him as a serious threat. Prophet Muhammad continued preaching to his people day and night. He traveled to distant lands, far away villages, spreading the message of the Qur'an. As a result, many people got convinced and stopped worshipping the idols and converted to Islam. Prophet Muhammad was very kind towards everyone, especially the poor. He treated everyone, young and old, poor and rich, with kindness and respect. There lived an old woman in the city who was a disbeliever. The woman made a habit of throwing rubbish on Prophet Muhammad whenever he passed in front of her house. The Prophet had to pass that house daily as it was on the way to the mosque. This happened every day, but every time she threw the garbage on him, the Prophet would continue walking silently. He neither showed any signs of anger nor was he annoyed. This routine took place every day. One day, as usual, the Prophet was on his way to the mosque. He passed the house of the old woman, but then no one threw garbage at him. The Prophet then stopped and asked the neighbor where the old woman was. The neighbor was surprised when the Prophet asked why she wasn't at her door, as usual, throwing garbage at him. The neighbor informed the Prophet that the woman was sick and she was bedridden. The Prophet thought for a while and politely sought permission to visit the woman. The old woman gave permission to the Prophet to enter the house. She thought he was there to take revenge on her. The Prophet smiled at her and told her that he wasn't there for any revenge. He told her that he was there to look after her needs. He said that it was the command of Allah to take care of the needy and help them. The old woman was greatly moved by the kindness and love of the Prophet. She now understood the greatness of the Prophet and that he was truly the Prophet of God. Realizing that Islam was the true religion, she accepted Islam at once. Alhamdulillah. The priests and the people of Quraysh then tried to tempt the Prophet into joining their religion. For this, they sent Utbah ibn Rabi'ah to meet the Prophet. He offered riches, honors, dignity, and a fortune larger than what any of them had. They even offered to make him the chief or even the king. The Prophet listened silently. Then he recited the first 13 verses of Surat Fusilat. He praised Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and explained about the glad tidings of paradise to anyone who believed in the one true God. The Prophet then reminded him about what had happened to the people of Ad and Thamud. When the Prophet finished his recitation, he said to Utbah, This is my reply to your proposition. Now take what course you find best. Utbah realized the greatness of the Prophet and never again did he try to convince him. Did you like the video, kids? If you liked it, please click the like and subscribe buttons and don't forget to click that notification icon to keep updated on all our videos. That's all for today. I will come back with another story in the next episode. Goodbye!